It's been more than a decade since officials from Turkey and Armenia sat down to discuss normalizing relations. Envoys from the two countries recently met in Moscow in the first round of talks to end decades of animosity. Although no breakthroughs were achieved, both sides agreed to hold future negotiations without any preconditions. The Turkish and Armenian foreign ministries described the meeting as positive and constructive and that a second round of talks will take place in the near future. The two countries have not had formal diplomatic relations since the early 90s. In a show of support, Turkey closed its border with Armenia in 1993, which was at war with its ally Azerbaijan over the occupied Nagorno-Karabakh region. In 2020, Ankara again backed Baku in its latest conflict with Yerevan. But now, with a new security environment in the southern Caucasus, have Turkey and Armenia found the conditions to finally end decades of mistrust? And to discuss the latest talks, joining me now from Istanbul is Vefi Baysan. He is a political analyst and faculty member at Ibn Haldun University. And from Yerevan, Vahram Ter Matevosyan. He is an associate professor at the American University of Armenia. A warm welcome to you both. Thanks for joining me on Straight Talk. So, Vahram, although no significant details were shared, what's your take on the first round of talks uh, between the Turkish and Armenian special envoys? Uh, you're right. Uh, there are not many details uh, about the essence of the discussion and what were the questions. Uh, and from that perspective, the statement of the Russian ministry is much more helpful, at least concerning the methodology of the next steps and uh, what are the priorities and uh, at least methodological approaches of both sides. So what the Russians are uh, saying is basically the following, that the parties have agreed to uh, start at least on agree on the baby steps that the most important questions are going to be left to, to, towards the later stage mm -hmm. and now the less uh, tricky questions are going to be discussed to me uh, as an analyst who has studied this uh, for more than uh, 15 16 years i think the the methodology and the toolbox is already inherently defective mm -hmm. so and there is enough lessons have learned from the past Okay, so Vipi, it seems that the normalization process uh, will uh, likely to proceed step by step, but in the meantime, uh, they're trying to build trust between themselves. Uh, what are the possible trust uh, building measures we're talking about here? Well, actually, uh, it, it's a constructive effort and uh, deserve definitely uh, a, a good support. So let's start with that. Mm -hmm. But these uh, steps actually came earlier by the appointment of the Turkish envoy, Mr. Uh, ambassador Serdar Kılıç. He mm -hmm. was a former ambassador to the U.S. on December 15. And then on the December 31st, uh, Armenian Economy Ministry um, lifted ban on uh, Turkish imports, yes. which is, uh, was a great step again. So these are very positive steps. Now, of course, um, Armenia expecting, hopefully, and Turkey, I'm sure, too, from the Turkish side, um, that the, you know, the, hopefully the borders would be, uh, uh, you know, kind of open up again. And uh, also the uh, flight start uh, to the capitals. Yes. So, Vahran, how is the current concept different uh, than 2009? Uh, well, I, first of all, the, it's, we see more active role of Russia. Uh, that is one uh, uh, clear distinction. Last time it was mostly a, uh, the US-driven uh, initiative with uh, Switzerland playing an important facilitation role. And Russia was sort of supporting the process, but um, not quite visibly. This time we see uh, another uh, Russia being more vocal and playing more tangible role. Why is so that? Uh, Why is that? Why has Russia well, changed because that? Of the, because of the recent um, war, and which changed not only the geopolitics, but also geoeconomics of mm -hmm. this uh, part of the world. So Russia understands very well that uh, it's it's better to somehow supervise a process to see uh, what are the emerging problems and opportunities for Russia. So Russians are no, not doing this because they are strategic partners of Armenia, they are doing for their own interests. So that's yes. first. Second, uh, this time we see the methodology is also different. Last time it was mostly um, 
foreign ministry driven processes that we saw in 2008 and 9 this time we see quite asymmetric uh, yeah. player from one side there is an ambassador college and the other side the vice speaker of the parliament and uh, who is who doesn't have a diplomatic rank i was going to ask you this will his relative young age be a hurdle in the future talks you know, that's one of the criticisms that he constantly has received from day one that his name was pronounced. The political opposition and the expert community have been quite concerned and also vocal about his uh, level of expertise and the level of and the depths of knowledge about, mm -hmm. about this. But what is mm -hmm. more interesting that Armenia's prime minister has voiced it that for him, this process is, a, is of political importance. That's why he trusts the, a member of his political team, and that was a, a direct quotation uh, from him. And that sent sh shockwaves in the country, because uh, it's, if it's supposed to be uh, an effort by the diplomats in order to normalize relations, why uh, rather an experienced person yes. uh, is, uh, uh, pay, uh, is placed on that for that role? So, Vipi, how has the first round of, uh, rounds of talks uh, between Turkey and Armenia resonated across the uh, world, especially in some European countries and the U.S.? Because we know that Ar Armenian lobbies in the U.S. and some European capitals uh, have been against past attempts to normalize relations between the two countries. Could they play a role in derailing uh, any future agreement? Well, actually... Uh... The way I see it is that um, uh, the, the European capitals as well as the US has a uh, cautious optimism about the subject. Mm. But that we have actually very strong evidence that uh, both sides are uh, investing heavily in the success of this, um, let's say, cooperation and regional uh, development. That's to say that the Turkish and Armenian ministries uh, announced uh, mutually and, and, and in a same text after the meeting saying that uh, continue negotiations without preconditions. So this is a very, very important uh, step for the success of this, uh, let's say, peace uh, yes. project. Because both countries need it, the region needs it. So I'm sure uh, both sides will kind of, uh, you know, move on uh, from the past and hopefully invest in the peace and in the better relations uh, between the two countries. So but let's have... remember, Aisha, yes. Aisha yeah, let me add this, because I don't want to miss that. Turkey is one of the first countries who... Who, who recognized the independence of Armenia. That's Let's true. Remember it well. That's true. So Varham Azerbaijan is uh, fully supportive of this normalization process. And at the same time, it is conduct conducting its own normalization process with Armenia. We know that Baku also wants to see progress towards the opening of a new trade route, a transit route to Nachevan through the Armenian territory. So how dependent are, are these talks to one another? I mean, could any setback in either derail the other one? Uh, I, should, I think that's, uh, that's a million dollar question because um, the entire process is so interwoven, intertwined, that it in, in inherently, that's why I said the toolbox is in, inherently defective. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, both Turkey and Azerbaijan have tried to link the normalization of relations between Armenia and Turkey to the Karabakh question. And now, uh, they are still trying to link this question again to the uh, normalization of relations between Armenia and Azerbaijan and uh, to Armenia and Turkey. So that's why bringing too many questions, too many already complex issues into one basket, trying yeah. to solve this uh, yeah. process, it creates more hurdles and more uh, obstacles uh, on the way. But I think one of the important ways to move forward is to distinguish between reconciliation and normalization. And what I see already that uh, the Turkish side and the Armenian side are trying to bring these two processes again, like they did in 2008 and 9, and they failed. Yes. I hope this time yeah. one of the lessons that they can learn is try to disentangle these two processes. Yeah, so it so seems the normalization that, yeah. requires political will, uh, whereas reconciliation can take years, decades, if not centuries. Mm -hmm. So we, they have to understand this. Uh, as clearly as they can. That's why maybe the two sides are concentrating more on economic benefits as they try to put aside uh, other 
uh, dispute. So, um, Vepi, what will these talks provide for the broader region? Could they unlock to decades of disputes in the South Caucasus or, or will the region be still prone to unrest? Well, the, um, uh, establishing the uh, direct channel of um, communication and negotiation is extremely important because both sides can uh, 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 kind of explain to their uh, own uh, voters about uh, you know what's going on as well as the misconceptions and gossips and etc. So that's extremely important and that's what the region actually need. And that's where I, I said at the beginning that uh, that kind of negotiations you know requires a lot of support because mm -hmm. it's very fragile as we see peace always being and the war always like you know very easy to uh, jump in that wagon. But we know it's a destructive and what region needs is the uh, uh, better relations that uh, hopefully translates into better economic relations. Let's remember like around a decade ago, around 10 years ago, yes. President Erdogan said that almost 250,000 Armenians were in Turkey working. So you can see like there are a lot of benefits between the two countries. And uh, also the Ministry of uh, uh, Economy in Armenia said that Turkish goods opening, um, lifting the ban is very important because that's creating a lot of inflation in the country. Yes. So it's, it's a mutual benefit. That's why I'm saying. And hopefully the region would take lessons and invest more in peace. So that that's, uh, I think, uh, probably the short answer to your question, I think. All right. Hopefully we'll know better when the uh, Turkish and Ar Ar Armenian envoys uh, meet again next time. So, Beppi, Bahram, thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.